What are you talking about? I stayed in a five-star hotel last night. Yeah, and you pocket-dialed me in the middle of your sordid little trysts with Dean. I see he's made himself scarce. George, I, I thought you'd come to forgive me. I had no idea. You didn't deserve to hear that. Because it shouldn't have happened. I didn't think you cared. What? Of course I care. About me, I mean. Yesterday, you were all about James Nightingale. You keep running back to him. How is that any different from me seeing Dean? James and I, ancient history. You and Dean, unforgivable. Nah, we're inevitable. If you keep on pushing me away, I mean, you're making me feel worthless. All I've ever done is love you, your son, your whole family. What I was trying to do was apologize to you last night until- We're boxing up my stuff and chucking me out is a funny way of showing that. You know, all this game playing. It's not for me. Sorry. George. George, come on, wait! You've been staring at that latte so long, it's now a cold brew. What's up? It's over with George. And I think it's my fault. Because of that voicemail you left. Well, it certainly didn't help. No, he... He got upset about me tutoring Julia. He, he thinks I'm... I'm using it as a way to get close to James. It's absurd. And now that Dean's back on the scene, as you know, and those two have reconnected. Not to play devil's advocate, but if everything that's gone on has been a misunderstanding... Uh, there's a lot more to it than that, Courtney. Not enough to end it, surely. Don't tell Grace, but... Part of the reason I come round to babysit Curtis is so Iona and I can feel closer to the Donovans in our old home. It's been a long year since losing Jesse. Oh, Courtney, I'm so sorry, love. I'm banging on about my own problems. When I look back, it's, it's the moments we wasted that hurt the most. If we'd reconciled earlier than we did, we would have had much more time together. So if George is the love of your life, you need to make some sacrifices so you're not forever chasing memories. Yeah, but... Swallow your pride and make things right. Because you never know what's waiting around the corner. Can't believe that posh hotels don't offer free breakfasts. I mean, a bacon butty for 20 quid, it's ridiculous. Do you fancy brunch? Uh, I'm good to not hungry. Really? I'm ravenous after last night. I mean, yeah, the folly was good, but the hotel was even better. <laughs> so if I were you, I'd refuel before round three. Look, I, I always knew that we'd get back together. Once you saw sense. I well, really made up. Oh, enjoy it. While it lasts. Oh, well, look, he's already here. Go get him, and then report back to me with all the details. All right. Hi. I wasn't sure you'd be up for talking after everything that was said. I'm just here to hear you out. George, I was really hurt last night by what I heard. It wasn't meant for broadcast. You said... You said, I just want to forget about John Paul. And in the moment, based on how you treated me, I honestly meant it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for calling you paranoid. I'm sorry for being so intense. And I'm sorry for not acknowledging everything that you've done for me and my family. Don't stop there. Keep going. I want a life with you. You have no idea how long I've waited for you to say that. And thank you for taking responsibility for your actions. Let's start afresh. Yeah. Steer clear of our exes. I'll... I'll give James a wide berth and you can give Dean his marching orders. Ugh, oh, believe me, he has served his purpose. He'll be on the next bus out of here. Oh, you just caught me. I'm on my way out. So it's good news, I hope. Yeah, it's great news. Oh. I'd have bought you a bouquet, but I'm already late back for class as it is, and then I've got to go to the dog and make the flat all nice for tonight, so... Reunited and it feels so good. <laughs> oh, I knew you two could work it out. Seriously, you, you gave me the reality check I needed. I, I get fixated on these 
blips and, and, and I build them up in my own head as red flags, but sometimes they're not red flags at all, they're just bunting. Sorry, I'm late. My brunch started repeating on me when I saw that ball or trying to crawl his way back into your good books. What's that for? It's your BFH. Boss home. What, what, what about last night in the, in the folly and in, in the hotel? Oh, you thought this was a reunion? As if I would waste my time. I used you. John Paul heard enough to beg for forgiveness. No. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mean that. You couldn't have, have said or done those things if... If I didn't think that John Paul was listening. Listen, I'm disgusted that I stooped so low as to sleep with a sad individual like you. Now take this and get out of town or else. I'll have your cheapest main to take away, yeah? Take a seat, son. It might be a while. Romantic feast for two, courtesy of the Hutch. <laughs> I used you. I'm disgusted. <laughs> I'll show you a sad individual, PC George Kiss. You can kiss all this goodbye. Sorry, what was that about George? <laughs> The thing. This time last night. Uh, I am not here for a history lesson, sir, but if there's anything you want to teach me later. You know him too, do you? Big blue hero. I know he and my friend John Paul are stronger than ever. No thanks to you. Mark my words. That's not gonna last. What we have is so special. I don't want anything or anyone saying otherwise. I fell for it too, didn't I? It's hard to see past the smile and the uniform at first. What did I do to deserve someone so perfect, eh? <laughs> Just luck, I guess. You know, it's ironic that he's a copper because he's the biggest con man out there. A year ago, I was happy, madly in love. And now I'm just used as a puppet for sex to make boyfriends jealous. Oh. And I'm sleeping rough in a car park. <laughs> and I only have George to thank for that. And your mate John Paul will be next. I'm going to spend every day telling you how amazing you are. I wouldn't settle for anything less. <laughs>